Hi travellers, I'm Ian's daughter Lil Lego. Thank you Mohammed for inspiring this video. He asked a question in the comment to another video, so I was like, this is a great idea, comparing the two countries now that I've lived in them. So I'm currently still here in Kuwait as I'm filming this. I'm just gonna caveat this video with two points. One of them is that there are many similarities, like being a Kiwi to my mind and to my experience that links to having lived in Australia and probably will again at some point. The second caveat that I have is that while I've been living in Kuwait the outbreak happened so really it's completely limited my experience of living in Kuwait. I haven't been able to see as much as I would have liked to because of the limitations in terms of movement. That may impinge on some of my comments moving forward. I've organized this into sort of categories so if you want to skip ahead to something that you're particularly interested in the timestamps are linked in the description box below. So the first category is safety. I'm here as a woman in both countries and I've had absolutely no problems. I definitely have never, yeah, I don't even know why I even thought to put this as a category, but I just saw perhaps for some of you, like, oh, I wonder if it's a thing. Not from my experience. I even struggled to think, what could it possibly be? What could go wrong? Obviously in Saudi when I lived there, I wore a buyer. I didn't always button it up. I had a button up run, and so yes, it would gape open and you know you'd see my tights underneath or whatever I'd be wearing. I have at times here miss wearing my abaya just because I have a pair of short shorts and I like wearing them. But like for me they were comfortable. I wouldn't necessarily go out on the street wearing them though. I would probably change into some shorts that are a bit longer. Don't always wear wear a t-shirt. I do have shorter and sleeveless tops as well and yeah that's probably the main thing. I've never, never felt unsafe. In both countries driving is the main way to get around but in both places yeah walking down the street has been fine. There are not designated footpaths here because it is such a driving culture. Much like in Australia how the footpaths are only on one side of the road. It's very dusty in both places. I felt like at least from memory in Saudi that the men walking towards me on the street they would purposely step out of the way or they would step to the side so I had a clear path. Here that's not as explicit. I'm sure it does happen but it's not. They're not obviously going oh crumbs woman stop even though we're all foreigners because both countries have large expat populations and both places have worn well I still have the same handbags um I don't zip my handbags up um, and both countries also have really high incidences and I'm comparing that to a home of car accidents because I'm not the one driving I have no control over that. My next category is healthcare. I've had insurance through my work and I also have travel insurance that I take out for you know the year before I leave home. So I have two versions of, of health insurance should I ever need it and you have seen in both living in China when I got pneumonia and when I've been here and I had a tooth break on me there have been times where I've utilised healthcare, but in both countries they have expat doctors and nurses and that means they've been trained abroad, they've been brought here to work like myself. The only thing is sometimes some foreigners, and some of you might even think that about me, have really strong accents so you've got to listen a bit more carefully and that is harder sometimes when you're not feeling yourself. Yeah, when I went to the dentist whilst his English was really good because of the specific words. So many appointments then I got used to it. Cost of living. Okay, I think Kuwait is much more expensive. In fact, it is the most expensive place I've ever lived. Clearly because I choose to live and work abroad, I am fine with paying import prices. The food is more expensive here and the transport as well. In both Saudi and Kuwait, I my motivation for coming was not tied to my pay. In fact in both jobs I've taken pay cuts to come to live here and try it out. So it was definitely a shock to the system 
and you don't know until you arrive, until you start living it. Yeah, but cost of living is it varies, you know? If you've got bills at home, you will make it work so that you've got the money you need to send home. And of course, for the first little bit, because you're not used to the money, then you are translating back to wherever you've come from to go, oh my word, and some things really are quite shocking. Also here are the transport. I think here, for me as an individual, it's been the transport that's been the expensive part. I have been on buses a couple of times and obviously that's the cheapest way to get around, but like buses anywhere, they're inconvenient, they don't always go in the place that you want them to. Here the taxis don't have working meters so you have to know how much it costs from where you are to where you want to go so that when you get it or before you get in when you know they wind down the window gosh i'm so old when they wind down the window <laughs> when they wind down the window and you know how much it should be that you need to negotiate the price quite honestly i don't know how tourists actually do it when they come here whereas in saudi they had uber and like everywhere it just makes it really easy i had a lot of trouble when i first arrived here getting a sim card saudi i did not i just went to the store i think it was stc i used to use there i went up to the counter and it was all sorted i did the same here i asked a colleague because it just happened to be the first people that i met he told me to go to zane and i went and i i got the person behind the counter to write down an EKD was like three gigabytes or something and like the different options because it turned out they were taking me for a ride and it was horrendous like it's like 20 KD for like three gigabytes a month like what is this insanity much better package for like five KD a month but that's the thing, as a newbie, how would I have possibly known? Definitely the food and the transport and the phone have all cost more here. Travel is my next category. So that, like Saudi, because, well for me, coming from an island in New Zealand, everything's close. So I want to go everywhere because it's so close. The flights prior to the outbreak, a lot of the flights go in like the middle of the night. The flight leaves at like 3 in the morning and I certainly did that when I lived in Saudi like flying to Dubai for the weekend. It totally stuffs up the whole weekend because you haven't slept as great as it is because there are, there's definitely cheap flights and there's cheap connections and it is, it's a good spot to be able to go places. I just wish they didn't fly in the middle of the night. <laughs> oh, the other good thing is because there are uh, low-cost carriers. I have flown with Flynas when I was in Saudi, so if you want to see that, I'll link those in the description box below. There's also Al Jazeera, which I haven't used, but I was definitely going to before the outbreak. Food and drinks. I have made a video on Talavat and how I've been ordering here in Kuwait. So if you'd like to see that, it's linked in the description box below. That is really how I get all my food and drinks. Of course, that's beautiful. Like anywhere, it's better and cheaper to buy local food. And both places, I've tried Kabser, I've tried, and I'm gonna stuff up the pronunciation, March Makbus. <laughs> I find those dishes really similar, like it's rice and some meat. <laughs> and because I've lived in Asia as a continent for such a long time. I'm very much over rice, so I'm very biased about this. I'm like, okay, well, I've tried the national dishes because that's what you're supposed to do, and okay, because of the heavy rice component, but that's purely just me. There are clearly billions of people that really enjoy rice. I'm just not one of them. It feels very similar to Australia or New Zealand where we have similar food tastes, we have similar palates. Yes, there is some difference. Both countries have shish to work, so I'm totally set. I think more so I prefer Lebanese. Like, I like the hummus. I love the hummus. And you can get Taliban in Saudi as well. In Saudi, it might be even more relaxed than when I was there because there was the the family side and then the single male side when you're going into restaurants. Whereas here, it's just wherever They're, they don't shut down here for prayer time saudi yeah occasionally we would get caught up by that 
They, I think they did, they stopped preparing, they stopped serving for the prayer break. Yeah, you had to get into the restaurant to get a seat, so you couldn't just bowl in. There's such a variety of foods that you can get here. Uh, I think both are quite heavily skewed to Americans. I think in both places there's a lot of burgers. I like burgers, but I don't need them every week of my life. Now I have like a skewed view of what Americans even eat because of the types of restaurants that are here and in Saudi. <laughs> burgers does one person need to consume in a week? <laughs> Apparently a lot more than I ever thought because there's just so many of them. And the price of food is more expensive here. But in saying that, I shop less at the grocery store. I've definitely only been to a physical grocery store a few times since I've been here. Part of that has to do with the outbreak. And part of it also is connected to the transport cost of getting there. The VAT did come in in Saudi when I lived there and so that was definitely an adjustment because overnight the prices went up. Category is housing. I have made videos of both my Saudi apartment and my Kuwait apartment, so if you wanna check them out, the link is in the description box below. I believe they're both really bad examples of housing, but they are just apartments, and hopefully your company puts you in better accommodation. I have, as a result of the outbreak, I have had a lot more time in this apartment than I would have ever thought possible. Like it better purely because of the amount of days, weeks, months that I've had to spend living inside. We'll note that in both countries I've lived during winter. Riyadh was a lot colder. I had a farawa in Riyadh and I wore it to work every day. People called me Jon Snow. It was my Jon Snow coat because that's what I looked like and that was also reflective of the time that I was living there. The Game of Thrones was a big deal. I couldn't have lived without it. It was just that bone chilling cold. Oh my goodness. So here, when I came, yeah, I did bring my coat from Kathmandu because I knew how cold it was in Riyadh. I was not that cold here. There were some colder starts in the morning. I had a heater like I did in 72, but it was not as cold and it definitely got warmer during the day. It's a bit warmer here, which is nice. Both countries have a lot of rubbish and that's through my eyes, that's my opinion. As you're walking down the street, or even as you're driving down the street, there's just rubbish. Pieces of rubbish, and people add to it, because as you're walking down the street, or as their car windows are open, they just throw rubbish out. And I know, as somebody that uses Taliban, especially as a single person, I create a lot of rubbish because of the package it ordered coffee and I also got a muffin which I haven't finished eating and I got a salad as well so of course that comes in another separate container but this is a lot of rubbish for one person and of course and the bag and because it's the outbreak the bag is sealed and there's just and that's just from a coffee order I've been educated in a way that okay I'll just hold on to my rubbish then. I can see how it's easy to just go oh mm, and just throw it. And the last category is people. Again because of the outbreak obviously I'm not engaging with other people so it has been much harder for me personally to meet local Kuwaiti people. Part of that obviously both culturally have that same gender division so it can be harder to meet the the opposite. I'm not saying it's not possible, it definitely is, but you just have to meet the right people who both have been really lovely and so generous. I think also I'm quite interested so I will ask what I think are really dumb questions but it's because I want to know more, like I don't know about stuff. Especially here, like we never learned at school or at uni, we never learned anything so I know nothing. Uh, I'm not somebody that follows the news, so I I come here with fresh eyes, I'm going to argue, and therefore what you tell me is the first time I've heard it. Any preconceived knowledge because I've not ever been exposed to it, which I think is exciting. In both places there's different tribes and so they do things slightly differently, and it's really interesting to get to know 
some of those differences all the way at the end, even with these different categories that I've spoken about, I maybe prefer Saudi because I miss my abaya. Isn't that the dumbest thing? <laughs> because you didn't have to think about what you were wearing for so long and then to have to revert back and go, oh, I actually have to like put real clothes on, <laughs> not just here I'm going out in my PJs or I'm gonna go with no pants on. It was, I, I did, I struggled for a long time and especially now because females can drive in Saudi whereas they couldn't when I lived there so it'd be interesting to go back. Also back then you, there weren't tourist visas. I do, I wonder what it's like now. I would say in both places you would want to get a car just because they are such car orientated uh, societies and the petrol's cheap. In both places I have deserts but yes I ultimately had a lot more fun in Saudi, like there was more stuff to do. I had a much larger group of friends, but as I say, like I think a lot of this is a result of living through the outbreak rather than on the country itself. You've got to decide, you've got to live it to know it. It's all well and good watching something on YouTube and going, hmm, I mean it can be part of your decision making. What things and amenities you need to be comfortable can be different than what I need to be comfortable. You can get by with English really easily and I think it is because they have, both countries have such very large expat populations. I definitely, hands down, learned way more Arabic in Saudi than I have here but again I think that is a result of the outbreak and just not having contact with people at all. I definitely enjoyed both countries for different reasons I'm just very grateful to have had the opportunity to live and work in both. Well I hope there are more opportunities in the future to live in the Middle East. It's easy to see when you, even when you just step out your apartment door, to see the salary disparities between people. I think at home it's less obvious but as I said here both in here in Saudi poor people are walking. Why don't these people have cars? And I'm one of them. I think at home you know people that are on the street are exercising. <laughs> they're not moving free <laughs> or they're choosing to walk because they want to walk not because they have to.